Sorry I haven't uploaded much recently, guys. I think it should become obvious why pretty soon, but, uh, yeah. That didn't work. Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about uh, Jean-Michel Jarre's Zulok. Okay, so the last time I talked about Jarre, we had an album where he was trying to move a little out of his comfort zone and try some new things, and the result, Magnetic Fields, was a little on the unfocused side. It didn't come together all that well for me, even if all the songs were enjoyable out of context. If he could come up with an idea that could continue to push him out of his comfort zone, but maybe have a more focused vision, maybe even have a concept to tie it all together, that could work a lot better. And the result, as you can see, was Music for Supermarkets. <laughs> an album that I skipped making a proper video on and will cover in the odds and ends video. Though, if, if you want my opinion in short, um, I thought it was slightly better constructed continuation on what was in Magnetic Fields. There was some pretty alright stuff overall. Except it really does not help that the world is only able to hear it on crappy AM radio quality, thanks to the fact that there's only one legal copy in the world. The reason music for supermarkets is relevant at all to the conversation is the fact that a bunch of the material from there was reworked into a completely new idea here that I think was executed a lot better. Zulik is one of those albums that is just a completely a one-of-a-kind experience. There's nothing out there that sounds quite like it. Now, I don't think it had the same widespread historical effect as his earlier stuff did, though I also think this was probably the last point at which he was trying to do something that was just totally game-changing. Jar dropping something as game-changing as Oxygen again was never going to happen, certainly not to that extent, but eh, he still tried. <laughs> See, the main thing that sticks out about this album is his use of sampling. Sampling was a, po a thing at this point. It was, it was 1984. I think hip-hop was still in its beginning stages at this point. But the way he utilized sampling isn't something that I've ever heard anything quite like. Before or since. Basically, he made an album that took his usual sound, combined it with some new wave tropes, which were popular at the time, and spliced together tons of little voice snippets of 20, I believe 25 different languages from around the world, giving this album this interesting world music spin that isn't like the other artists out there that came afterwards who would combine electronic and world music, like Banco de Gaia or Thievery Corporation or Spongle. Jar also kinda gave us one of the earliest examples of what I can only describe as White TPMV, basically. They're, they're tracks where he takes vocal samples, repeats them over and over, but pitches them up and down to create a melody like this, 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 this. While there are plenty of albums since that have utilized similar techniques, it still stands alone as this point in history that hasn't quite been replicated since. And while it is certainly not the most serious Jar album, it is definitely pretty cheesy and silly in moments, but it is a ton of fun! In fact, between how fun it is to listen to, and how creative and out of the box it was at the time, and even now, how unique an album it is, I'd even go as far as to say, this is my second favorite Jar album behind Oxygen itself. It's the kind of album that solidified that Jar was not just a one-trick pony. He was capable of pushing himself into new territory and trying new things, but he could still work these new ideas naturally into his style, and have it all sound like himself. And I don't even mind the fact that it's a pretty silly album that isn't trying to be all grand and epic all the time like some previous stuff. I mean, Magnetic Fields already showed that Jar didn't have to be serious to be good. I still like the last part of that album, even despite its being comically out of place. Zulik, though, just so happens to be much more fun and more well-executed and cohesive all around. So, uh, let's go down individual tracks. This album starts out with the 11-minute epic opener, Ethnicolor. In the first seven minutes or so of this track is very much trying for this huge orchestra-like bombast, with the same kinds of classical-influenced chord progressions that Jar tends to use, bringing lots of different textures of random voices speaking in lots of different languages, usually only like a word at a time, though. And sometimes one can wonder if maybe Jar hadn't fully thought through how the samples might sound. There is one obvious sample that plays one of the main slow melodies in the beginning that sounds like it's saying the word tit over and over. 
And fair warning, it's not the end of that. And there's also a cascade of voices that gets progressively pitched down, like like some of those bleeping synths that he uses. And it would be like this amazing textural idea, if not for the fact that at one point it sounds like it's saying piss 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 piss. But like I said, this album d does not take itself all that seriously, so I doubt Jar doesn't already know what the problem with these sounds might be and isn't just running with it. Whatever, there's still plenty of texture and detail to this piece to make up for kinda silly moments like that. I've listened to it enough that it doesn't bug me anymore. And at the 7 minute mark of this track, it changes into something a bit more energetic. Still lots of big synth chords that sound like they're imitating French horns or something. And it turns into this, like, really 80s sounding thing, complete with slap bass and that hard-hitting Phil Collins in the air tonight style percussion. But still keeping the epic synth progressions around. And that's just the beginning of this album. It does a pretty good job of tone setting, though. While the rest of the album isn't always trying to be, you know, so obviously big and epic like this one is, it's certainly... the rest is certainly made up of all the same kinds of sounds. Anyways, moving on from here, we get the track Diva, which is kind of a two-parter. One more dramatic and ambient-centric first half with a lot of water droplet sounds along with the same blends of vocal snippets as before, and a much more energetic and poppier second half. The latter half is entirely just taken from one part of music for supermarkets. I used to like the second half way more than the first, but I think I like both the same now. And of course, the entire piece has the voice of none other than Laurie Anderson all over it. Right after her own breakout album, Big Science, no less. Remember ages ago when I reviewed Jar's Electronica 1 project and didn't put together who she even was or that she'd worked with Jar before? Good times. Anyways, here she's doing that same kind of weird spoken word stuff she's kind of known for. Uh, though she's also speaking in some other language that I can't understand at all. Plenty of personality there, nonetheless, and definitely welcome presence on this track. This is a, definitely a highlight for me. Now afterwards is where things get a little irritating because there's two separate versions of the album. In the original 1984 version we would go to the title track, but I'm actually used to listening to the 1985 reissue which places the track Zoologology at track 3 and swapping its original position with that of the title track. On top of that, they're marked as remixes, though uh, I listened to the originals and it's become clear that they're not remixes in the sense that we usually think of when we hear that in like the age of EDM and stuff. Here it's a remix in a much more literal sense, as in some people went back and gave the track new mixing and made it sound a little better. The arrangement isn't any different, Zoolocology is a little shorter, but doesn't really matter much to me because I think the sound quality also went up a little bit in the 85 version. Or maybe I'm biased since this is the version I'm used to listening to, but never mind that. Yeah, so Zoolocology, that is the big single from this album. It's the one that most people seem to remember the most easily. It's certainly the catchiest track on here, and that one vocal sample from Ethnicolor comes back in a big way. Main melody going like tit, 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 tit. Subtle. I do think the catchiness of the melody and the punchy production uh, went out in the end over the questionability of the main sample. Sure, this uh, the track is incredibly 80s, but it's the good kind of 80s. It's charming in its datedness. I, it's lots of fun to be at here. And he clearly doesn't regret using that sample. <laughs> I even saw Jar perform this track live when I saw that concert of him that one time. That was pretty awesome, I gotta say. Anyways, moving on to the next track, which is Wooloo Mooloo. That's quite the title. Probably the least interesting track on here, unfortunately. It's got the same watches of bleeping and blooping from Oxygen we've already heard before all over it, as well as the usual pitch-down voice snippets. But uh, it does have this creepy industrial clanking throughout that does make it more distinctive. The title track is another punchy 80s pop type track. So the melody is carried more by synth setting that vaguely sound like voices, and most of the samples are more in like the percussion section than they are in the melodies, which is pretty interesting. Though not as instantly catchy and memorable as Zoolocology, it's certainly a really fun track with some great 80s bass lines. Blah Blah Cafe is another track that got copy-pasted from Music for Supermarkets. There's not really any vocal samples in this one, actually, uh, but it doesn't feel out of place, either. It's really percussive and hard-hitting, like, 
The kick drum is like banging a table with a wooden plank or something. And there's a lot of synths that just are squeaking and squealing and there's even some synths also that imitate horn sections, which is cool. That's a really fun track. And finally, we finish with Ethnicolor 2, which uh, really doesn't have much to do with the first Ethnicolor, aside from maybe the fact that it's going for a more orchestral, grander type sound. Though here it's less bombastic in the arrangements and more just in the fact that there's a synth string section on here. The actual piece isn't all that intense or epic, it's feels like we're being, feels like we're putting on the brakes for the ending. And I'd say that works alright. Maybe not the most satisfying ending a Jar album has ever had, but it's certainly serviceable. So that's pretty much everything I have to say on the topic of Zulek. It's not perfect, can definitely be cheesy and have silly moments that I'm not always 100% sure were on purpose. Pretty sure, but not 100%. And it does have a lot of flavor taken from the sound of the time as well. I mean, of course, Jar did not invent the 80s with this album, but he did create something really special for me here. It's got a really unique idea and execution, it involves some interesting new techniques that were pretty out of the box at the time, and it's just a lot of fun to listen to with lots of great melodies and solid production. An album like this is the reason why I tell people there is more to Jar than just Oxygen. It's definitely worth people's time, it's a long time personal favorite of mine as well, and uh, I'm overall feeling an 8.7 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. Uh, if you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.